The year was 1965. The US military wanted a big plane to transport cargo, twice the size of regular jetliners. Many companies bid to build it. Among them was Boeing. They did not win the bid, but they had the foundation of a big plane ready, the 747. Who would buy it? Most airlines were not interested, but Pan Am was. It's a US carrier. It pushed Boeing to build the 747 and it started with a conversation between Boeing's then CEO Bill Allen and Pan Am's then president Yuan Tripp. Tripp told Allen, if you build it, I will buy it. Allen replied, if you buy it, I will build it. The rest, as they say, is history. Boeing developed the 747. Pan Am bought 25 of those planes. It changed the aviation game. The 747 was called the Queen of Skies. It revolutionized the way we fly. Before the 747, flying was expensive. The aircraft brought down the, the price of travel. If it ain't Boeing, I ain't going. That was a slogan back in the day. Boeing still sells merchandise with this slogan. But no one's buying it anymore. This is a company that changed the way we fly, how far we fly, and how much we pay to fly. Yet two crashes and multiple accidents and zero accountability later, Boeing is now a dreaded name in the world of aviation. This was a company that helped put men on the moon. Yet now its planes are falling apart. So what went wrong with Boeing? How did it lose its reputation for safety? And did corporate greed lead to its downfall? Hello and welcome. I'm Palki Sharma and this is Between the Lines. It was 8.38 a.m. local time. Ethiopian Airlines Flight 302 had just taken off from Addis Ababa. The weather was good. There was clear visibility. The aircraft was a brand new Boeing 737 MAX 8. It was like nothing could go wrong, yet everything did. Within minutes, alarms started ringing in the cockpit. The plane started to descend. The pilots did their best. They tried to guide the nose of the plane upwards, but an electronic system forced it to shut down. They tried a manual override. It worked once. The plane started to rise, but the system shut down again. The plane nosedived. It fell faster every second. At 8.44 a.m., it crashed near Bishoftu, killing all passengers on board, all 157 of them. This crash shocked the world, though it wasn't the first. Just five months before, another plane had crashed. Lion Air Flight 610, this time in the Java Sea. 189 people lost their lives. The issue was the same. The aircraft started descending. Pilots could not control it. That plane too was a Boeing 737 MAX 8. So five months, two major crashes and one plane. Of course, questions were raised. When the first flight crashed, Boeing blamed the carrier. It slammed Lion Air, the airline flying it in Indonesia. When the second flight crashed, Boeing could not twist it anymore. The victims demanded answers, regulators wanted a probe, and the world asked, was it safe to fly a Boeing again? It was a moment of reckoning, especially for a company that's over 100 years old. Boeing was set up in 1917 in America. By the 1930s, it became a leader in all metal aircraft construction. Soon after the US entered the Second World War, Boeing built bombers, it built military jets. By the 1950s, the Cold War was a fact of life. Boeing was looking to expand. So in 1958 came the 707. It was America's first commercial jetliner. A few years later, Boeing added the 720. It was slightly faster. So things were going well for Boeing. But then came the 1970s and the Great Recession. Boeing was in debt. It spent a lot of money developing the 747. Would it work out? That was a question on everyone's mind. The 747 changed the company's fortunes. Boeing sold 1,500 of those. So things were looking up again. The company was doing well. But then came the 1990s and everything changed for Boeing. You see, since 1917, Boeing was less of a company and more of an initiative. It was an association of engineers. They believed in building amazing machines, no matter what the cost. All of that changed in 1997. Boeing acquired McDonnell Douglas. 
its long-time plane manufacturer rival. The resulting company was a giant. It took Boeing's name, but it did not take Boeing's culture. Earlier, engineers made up the top leadership. Now, they were only executives. It became less about building machines and more about the bottom line. Plus, the next decade was difficult for them. Airbus was founded, Boeing lost ground to it. In 2003, it lost its lead in the market. The rivalry intensified in the days ahead. Boeing had its 737, Airbus had its A320. They were the workhorses of the aviation world. Thousands of them flew every day, but soon Airbus got a lead. It was developing a new A320. It left Boeing worried. So they started to work on the 737 MAX. The aircraft was finally ready in 2015. Boeing needed it to do well, and it did. It became the company's top-selling plane. Profits were soaring. Revenue topped $100 billion for the first time. All was well until 2019. The two crashes happened. Countries grounded the 737 MAX. Boeing shares plummeted. Investigations began, and later that year, the truth finally came out. Boeing said the aircraft had concerns. It knew about them. Yet it did nothing. You see, Boeing already had the 737 aircraft. It was built in the 1960s. In the 21st century, Boeing wanted to compete with Airbus, so it needed a new aircraft, but it did not have the time to create one from scratch. So it revamped the old 737. That led to technical problems. The 737 was built to fly closer to the ground. But with the new version, Boeing made modifications, fitted it with new parts, added a new control system. It was called the MCAS, Maneuvering Characteristics Augmentation System. And it's this system that was the probable cause of both the crashes. Boeing installed it, but it did not inform the regulatory body or the pilot, so no one really knew. Essentially, it was just a way of cutting corners. Boeing wanted to fend off its rival Airbus, but it, in doing that, it suppressed concerns about safety. A congressional report blamed a culture of concealment. Those were the words they used. Boeing had to pay two and a half billion dollars in damages and fines. But what was really battered was its reputation. Boeing apologized. It promised to do better. It promised to put safety first. But five years later, things are not really looking better. On the 5th of January, a Boeing 737-9 made an emergency landing. Do you know why? The door plug blew out. Imagine flying in the air and suddenly there's a gaping hole in your flight. It's scary. It's the stuff of nightmares because flying is so much about trust, about putting your faith in the machine and those flying it. Thankfully, no one was hurt this time, but the checks revealed loose bolts. Questions were raised again, and Boeing is struggling to answer those questions. This is a company that hailed innovation for a century, yet in the last two decades, all Boeing has done is chase profit at the cost of safety. Putting aircraft in the air mattered more. Employees worked overtime, often 10 to 12 hour shifts. They had to meet tough deadlines. And that could not be done without cutting corners. Plus, there was a wide disconnect between the management and the workers. It led to immense pressure. It affected the quality of work. It affected the morale of the staff. Many old employees quit. Apparently, they were asked to join back after the crashes, but they're said to have declined, citing the negative environment. Boeing soared because of innovation. It's falling because of corporate greed. Since 2019, it hasn't recorded a profitable quarter, and by the looks of it, it's not happening anytime soon. So is this the end of the road for Boeing? Highly unlikely, at least not in the near term. The company is not shutting down. Far from it. And the idea of this story is not to single out one company. It's to tell a cautionary tale of how giants crash if they take their customers for a ride. Businesses want profits. That's the nature of the game. But there's a line they should not cross. This should serve as a lesson for all companies, including Boeing, of course.